like we just had a transaction where the seller was at the closing and the buyer notified us literally five minutes into the closing he was not showing up people need to understand in real estate transactions can sometimes be just as predictable as people are people right. are not, you know there are just as many people in the world they're all different and sometimes people act unpredictably you don't want that to be you you don't right. want to, you don't want to be left there without an advocate or with the wrong advocate it's easy to be the hero when you get twenty thousand dollars over list it's not that easy to be the hero when things don't go right Welcome back, everyone. We are here today again with our special guest, Martin Bauma of the Bauma Group Realtors. Hi, Martin. How are you? Hi, Danielle. Really good. How about yourself? Doing very well this morning. Excited to see the sun. It's been very rainy here in Michigan for about two to three weeks. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to see the sunshine today. I'll take it. Um, all right. So today, Martin, we're going to talk about something that I think, honestly, your team embodies it. And I would love to hear a little bit more about what it means to you. Let's talk about white glove service. Yeah. Well, to begin with, my whole philosophy is that service is what distinguishes us, you know, from it's one of the few things that makes us different from other realtors. Uh, I think it's actually probably one of the best marketing tools that you can possibly have is to service a client really well, because if you leave a client with a wow experience, they're going to definitely talk about it. Right. And they're going to tell other people and the referral business comes in. And so um, the whole process of what does service look like? Um, it begins from the moment you meet with your client and it's called setting expectations. I think, you know, every single day when I uh, talk to sellers, especially if they're expired or whatever, the number one complaint they have is lack of communication and really comes down to a lack of understanding what's coming next, right? And so um, it begins with setting the expectation at the listing appointment or at the buyer appointment and letting them know what they can expect from you, right? Uh, if you don't set any boundaries, you can be the best realtor in the world, but if that client doesn't have understand your boundary, he's calling at 10 o'clock at night or, you know what I mean, all these... Um, he's going to leave with a bad experience. So you, you, you set those expectations, say, listen, I work from this time to this time. Um, if there's something that's really important that can't wait till tomorrow, you can call me on my cell phone. But I mean, that is only for something that can't wait till tomorrow. So you just sort of set the stage that way. Then the next most important thing is that you do what you tell them you're going to do. And that is where a lot of people fail. Um, a lot of people don't even set expectations. But number two, when you set the expectation, it's absolutely important you follow that. If you say you're going to call tomorrow, you don't call two days down the road, right? Those people are waiting for you. So when you do these little things to where you say, I'm going to call you tomorrow and you don't, you suddenly you're telling that client they're not important to you, right? And again, the whole uh, goal of, uh, of providing service is to make sure that you always make your client feel important and that you make them feel that you're doing everything you possibly can to help them through the process. So we have an entire process when a listing goes in, I'm from the listing side, of exactly what's going to happen. Uh, we spend a lot of time on phone calls, not emails. A lot of people like to hide behind emails. Um, I find that's, um, you know, the, that's sort of the easy way out uh, because you don't have to talk to people. But it's also, it doesn't allow you to build a relationship with a client. You know, an email um, just comes across as, okay, who's this from? So like, for instance, the minute the listing goes in, my listing manager will call, hey, Mr. Salary, I just want to let you know, we just put them all your property in the MLS. And we just call them every step of the way and let them know what's happening. Again, exactly set up with the expectations I set up by the time of the listing period. Let me ask you a question there, because I want to dive deep on this. Uh, how often are you calling your sellers during the active listing period? So I set aside Wednesdays to call all of my sellers. And what I do on those appointments, I go in and I say, I check since the last week, I create all these different um, save searches for each listing. I just go in that save search and say, hey, what's changed since the last uh, report a week ago? what sold, what went in the contract, what came to the market, right? I will email them those listings so they have them to look at. And I'll just put my little two cents in there about what, what, what this means. And then I call them and we discuss that. So I do that every Wednesday. And why, I tell, did pick, why did you pick Wednesday? Because uh, it's sort of in the middle of the week, you know? So you're, like Mondays are always pretty busy. Um, Wednesdays I can sort of digest, you know, it's, it's sort of the one day that um, I find is the least busy. Um, yeah. before, before the weekend and after the weekend, it seems things are busy. And I, well, I love, I love the fact that you picked Wednesdays because I know, you know, as, as a prior listing agent, it gave me the opportunity as well to take a look at what had gone on over the weekend. A lot of properties go under contract Monday and Tuesday after the weekend. And so it allows us to take a look at that, but it also allows us time to make any kind of changes that we're going to make to the list price or the marketing prior. Like if we're going to put an open house, it gives us those couple of days of lead time before the weekend. Right. Because a lot of times if people take a day or two to report something sold, right? 
Um, and by Wednesday, everything from the weekend has definitely been reported. And so, and so what I do, I tell my sellers, that's what I do, right? And so I don't have sellers calling me Sunday and Monday. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Because they know I'm calling them on Sunday. Now, what I will do, and this is the step above, whenever I see feedback, I will sometimes, a lot of times, just pick up, hey, Mr. Seller, do you notice that, you know, those are two-minute phone calls, right? And you can do it while you're, you know, walking down the sidewalk. Um, those are the actions they don't expect because I don't tell them I'm going to do that. So anything you tell them what you're going to do and then you go over and above, that's what I they consider a lot of experience, right? And I will tell you, like we just had a transaction where the seller was at the closing and the buyer notified us literally five minutes into the closing, he was not showing up. So the deal fell apart. And of course they got down to who's keeping the earnest money. Then the buyer came back again. He said, okay, I will close under these conditions. Once again, the buyer, the seller came down from Marquette to sign his paperwork. The buyer didn't show up, said he wasn't buying the house. It finally, uh, when this, the buyer realized he was losing his earnest money, decided to close. So the third time was a go. However, can you imagine that seller left the transaction? He could not have said enough nice things about our team because every step of the way we were communicating, right? As opposed to a lot of people, when things get tough, they pull back. They, they, you know, they're embarrassed. They, they don't want to get in the fray, right? And I think that's where we really come in. Uh, our, that's where our profession really shows. It's easy to be the hero when you get $20,000 over list. It's not that easy to be the hero when things don't go right, right? But that determines, that's the difference between, I think, a real, real estate professional and someone who's just playing with it, right? And I think that that is huge right there. That's, that's a nugget. In fact, this is what I'm probably going to start the video with because people need to understand. In real estate, transactions can sometimes be just as predictable as people are. People, right. are not, you know, there are just as many people in the world. They're all different. And sometimes people act unpredictably. You don't want that to be you. You don't, right. want, to, you don't want to be left there without an advocate or with the wrong advocate. Right. Um, so I think that's a really important thing to touch. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the aspect of white glove service when you're running a team. And I'm yeah. going to start by giving a little bit of context. Yeah. One of the uh, most powerful exercises I ever did with my team and what I do now with my market center staff, now that I'm, you know, manning the brokerage and running yeah. the brokerage for all of our agents um, we identify the life cycle of our agents or, you, you know, in your situation, it would be the life cycle of a seller. And we identify who is walking them hand in hand through each part of that experience. Right. And what I love about a team, and maybe you can shed some light on how your team has done this. Um, it allows you to microscopically focus on, on one part of the experience between yourself and the client. And right. it allows you to deliver what a wow experience. Right. And in a way that as a single agent, it's really hard to pull that off for all your clients during the whole experience, every step of the way, wow, 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 right? But if you focus on one thing, like the listing process right. or the under contract process, it's a lot easier to deliver that. Right. I'll tell you, it's very interesting um, because a lot of times people will say, well, they need me, right? Like, especially a single agent going to a team and they don't, they have a hard time releasing because they feel the client wants them, Right. And then what happens is because they allow that to continue, they can't provide the service, right? Because they can't do everything. And I always tell people, a client is interesting because I'll have with some of my high end listings, they want only me. I'll go out there with Mary Jo and, um, you know, and I'll do the presentation, but then I get back, hey, Mary Jo, why don't you call them and touch base with them, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? They're getting the service that they want. They're getting all the needs met. They almost forget about me, right? And so uh, with a team, that's the hardest thing when someone goes from being a single agent to being a team is really allowing yourself to delegate these things so that that person can provide all those phone calls and even, you know, I mean, the things that really provide the service. But the thing is, that's where you have to have talent. You, you have to hire talent, someone who, under, you know, who understands service, who is very servant-minded. Um, and that is, you know, the reason I can do what I do is because I have two admin people who did all the background work, right? They're, they're getting my market reports ready. They're getting, uh, doing all the marketing stuff. They're doing the paperwork, all of that kind of stuff, which allows me to spend my time on the phone, right? Amen to that. Uh, the operations department, they are the heart of service. Oh, and they are. It, like, I, I, love, I love seeing my people hire their first admin, right? And growing that person into a director of operations. I just think that that is what takes a business. It's what takes a real estate agent into being a business. Correct. Correct. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Well, kudos to you and to your operations staff. I know they're fantastic and they're the heart of the organization. Let's hear, I want to hear one specific example. What have you guys implemented as the Bauma Group? Leave us with one example of a wow experience. What have you guys done? I don't, you know what? I don't think there's one wow experience. I think it's a whole bunch of little things, right? Um, it's just being very thorough every step of the way. Never let them, you know, whenever a client calls me, 
I haven't done my job, right? I always want to be one step ahead of them. So like when a client calls me, I go, ugh, it kills me. That means that my opinion, I didn't communicate something right, right? My expectations. So I don't think it's one big thing. It's all these little steps all the way along the way. Just the font, constant call. Hey, I just want to let you know about this. Hey, I just got hit. Blah, blah, blah. You know, praise, you know what I'm saying? So they totally feel in the loop and feel taken care of. Uh, but it's amazing how many times people say they can't, you know, they, they just assume the client knows everything we're doing, right? Um, and just like with uh, my market reports every single week, they're getting all this information about the market. So when I ask for a price reduction, I'm already setting them up because I'll tell them, you guys, if we have 10 to 12 showings and there's not an offer, that means we need to lower the price, probably 5%. So it's setting everything up ahead of time and then just doing consistent communication. I think that's the real key, honestly. Right. And going over and above, you know what I mean? Just meeting all of the, all of the needs. And so, so, so just to recap, folks, uh, advice from Martin Bama, we've got over communicate with your clients, make sure that they understand what not is only not only what is going on right now, but what's coming to them down the pipeline. What's coming next? What's coming next? Uh, yeah. Free manage their concerns before they even have them. Yeah. Right. By over communicating and set your boundaries and expectations from the get go so that they understand when they'll hear from you, the frequency, the content. Uh, and who to go to, right, with, with their questions. And I love that you have a metric for success. If your clients have called you, it's because you haven't quite done your job. So uh, that's fantastic. Thanks so much for your time today, Martin. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Hey, bye-bye. Bye-bye.